All right, I think we're just going to uh, start the show immediately. Mm, <laughs> Welcome cool. to Sad Boy. So, oh, wait, no. Well, no. Do you have something to say, Jordan? Um, no, no. I don't want to. It's been There's been an issue for the last couple of episodes of me sort of, I think it's the latency of me talking oh, over I'm, your intro. I'm and I do not. I truly, dude, truly, bro, I don't want that to be a thing. And I don't, because at this point, it's not even funny. Like, I've done it so many times that it's the, the joke's not even funny. So, please. We agree. We agree. Yeah. Please. Take it I'm away. Gonna, I'm going to. I'm gonna so start. we're gonna start. No, just, should I? No, should yeah. I so start? I'm gonna start. No, <laughs> Nezrin, you're not allowed to talk yet. Yeah. Just nobody talk, please. Okay. Welcome to Sad Boys, oh. a podcast. God, okay. No, I was just gonna say that I wouldn't do it this time because it's been so long since the last. It would be insane to carry the bit after it's, we did it's, like a, it's funny that it's funnier every single time. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm just having a great time being the Welcome gastric. to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also on Sharp. <laughs> I'm Jordan and I, I will never change. Today we're joined by a uh, friend of the pod, incredible photographer, content creator, influencer in her own right. Nezrin Danan. Nezrin, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for finally letting me speak. I love it here. Yeah. No problem. You want to take it from here? We're all inclusive here on Sad Boys. <laughs> mm. Now, if you can just shut You're up and let us do our... <laughs> and now, if you, could, yeah, if you could be quiet, though. <laughs> just a little while. We've got these jokes we want to do. Now, does everyone have, have their scripts? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, what are we talking about? I just kind of was so like, I'll come thing. on the podcast, but like, what's up? So, I mean, that's pretty much the podcast is we just talk about what's up. Cool. And, you know, Sad Boys is a podcast, comedy podcast about feelings. We're going to talk about our weeks, our feelings, fun stuff, anything that's going on. Probably get off on some tangents. Cool. Give me some time. mope scores. It's a score out of 100% as to how mopey you're feeling in this particular moment. Oh, yeah. I'll get back to you on that. Today, I'm actually feeling okay. pretty good, but normally my mope score would probably be quite high. Okay. So we'll talk about that. Got some tea to spill. Like fruit, fruit for discussion, some tea to spill. Okay, uh, fantastic. But first... Before we get into this, Nezrin, how was your week? Um, It was good. I've been working a lot, so it's been kind of busy. And I had a friend staying with me for a while while she was like finding an apartment. And so I feel like I've just been like overwhelmed, but um, it's been fine. You also just moved to LA, right? Like, like how recently did you move? I moved in on August 1st. So it's been like a little over a month. Mm. And you already have a friend staying with you? They couldn't let you like get your sea legs first? <laughs> I know. Yeah, she had actually moved here at the very beginning of quarantine from Tokyo. And she was like staying with her boyfriend in Orange County. And then that like wasn't working out. And she was like, I want to find my own place. So she stayed with me while she was looking at places in my neighborhood. And she found a spot. Mm. So she moved in on Sunday. Oh, that's that's exciting. So yeah. now she's out of your hair. And you're, like, <laughs> I honestly am yeah. such like an introvert. I love having my own space. And like, I love having guests. Like, it's fun for me but I'm also just like, I need to be alone, so. Do you want to talk yeah, shit no, now because she's not listening? <laughs> no, I would never talk shit. She's so nice. Do you want so to say nice. some of the stuff you said before we started recording? Because <laughs> Wait, but before we started recording, you had so much shit to talk you about. Were popping off, I literally right. had no shit to talk. Jarvis, you're making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's not like it's being recorded. <laughs> just kidding. We're only live to an audience. <laughs> no, Nezrin wasn't talking shit, friend from Tokyo. Congrats on your place. This is now a podcast just to you. <laughs> So, Nezrin, you moved from Portland. I did. Big mistake. Uh, I feel like, did you say big mistake? <laughs> big mistake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, we've already, we just hit you with a big earthquake. So um, yeah, that, that was my first earthquake I've ever felt, actually, because I've been here for two other ones and I didn't even feel them. And that was the first yeah. one where I was like, oh my God, is someone like jumping up and down? But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A giant. <laughs> God is jumping up and down. You're right. You hadn't just not experienced one, but you fully didn't know what it was. Yeah. I, <laughs> You've never heard of it. I literally like don't even remember the other ones. I think one, I was asleep. And the other one, I remember I was like in the shower and I like came out later and everyone's like, are you okay? And I was like, N literally nothing happened. And they were like, yeah, there was an earthquake. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm clean. What the, are you trying to insult me or something? <laughs> yeah. I was terrified for a hot second because- there's always that moment when an earthquake starts where you're like, is this an earthquake? And then I was just kind of like, things were starting to shake. And I was like, this is a lot of shaking. Like, is stuff going to fall off the walls? And then it, you know, calmed down. And I was like, that was a close one. <laughs> it seems like every couple of weeks, something new appears that makes me go, well, you know, I'd, I'd like to get back to LA, but, you know, there's a, there's a little thing. Don't get me wrong, you know, it's, it's the COVID, terrible, all that, but I'd love to at least be nearer my friends and it's on fire. 
It's literally a blaze. Okay, I might take, but I'd like to get back. You know, all my friends are there. The ground is shaking, and I'll die for sure. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll keep not being there for a little while longer. Yeah, the air quality was literally so bad, and like I'm, you know, sensitive groups. When it says unhealthy air for sensitive groups, like that's me. And I was like, I like couldn't <laughs> no breathe. Flakes. I would like go outside, and I like literally couldn't breathe. And I was like, this. Why that's- did I move here? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, score. But at least it's more expensive. On the bright side, yeah. yeah. Weren't there also fires in Portland too? So it was like, there's no escape. Yeah, and I think it was actually worse up there. I was like talking to my mom and my friends about it. So there there truly is no escape, but now I'm paying there's more no in escape. rent to die from that's, that so air quality. Fine. Yeah. 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 Can, yeah. That way you'll run out of money by the time that you choke on the ash. Exactly. I'm like, you know what? When the big one comes and we're all just like sucked into the ground, it's not going to matter. It's fine. It's not going to matter. It's all good. Or we'll just like go off into the sea and become our little island. Yeah. <laughs> We were pointing this out earlier, but for people watching the video version of the podcast, Jordan and I are wearing similar enough shirts that it kind of just looks like he is me, but with more hair and a mustache. Mm, from the future. From the future, yeah. <laughs> Facial hair, He's so like, you know things have changed. <laughs> I'm here from the future. Uh, don't grow a mustache. That's all you came <laughs> to tell me? <laughs> Yeah, well, it has cascading effects. <laughs> okay. Are you familiar with the butterfly effect? <laughs> yes. This well, has nothing to do with that. It's but unrelated, just don't grow yeah. the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> just, just the mustache thing. Hold on to that. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Jordan, how's your week? Not too bad at all. Not too shabby. Pretty great. Pretty great. Just did like a three hour, three and a half hour stream right before this. Because the PC arrived. Dark days are over. It's finally here. Nezman, for context, this has been like a FedEx has been torturing us for like quite some time oh no it's, it's what happened very hard to do oh my god they just you know what <laughs> we got to get them on the show <laughs> just get FedEx, michael just FedEx, get FedEx or whatever, on the show. To come on the show just whoop his ass with gotcha journalism but yeah it's more like great. fed that up x yes dude we go off king you're f- you're f- you're fed up at the federal express so i said it, you're more like it's more like fed up x yeah okay you said you had a tight five so <laughs> take it away please FedEx. don't let me get in the way <laughs> It's it's bad. Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things. Normally when I say this, you do start talking. Yeah, your nosebleed. Uh, it's been good. It makes me feel a little bit more grounded. I've been out of, been away from what feels like home, like the, you know, LA for a long time now, the, most of this year. And I it makes me feel a little bit more grounded and also means that I can do stuff with people for the first time in yeah. a while. Uh, it's pretty the, good. Sh- the short story is that Jordan a- had to leave America. Creative differences. And I lost a bet. He- <laughs> all of his stuff is in storage. And so I shipped him his computer. And then when it got there, it didn't get there because FedEx was like, how about it goes to Poland? Oh, yeah. Poland. Wait a minute. We want it to go somewhere else. What? <laughs> and then they were like, we've got your computer. Do you want it? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I would, Do you want the I thing like that you it. own? How about if we broke it in some ways? And it, it's like, uh. <laughs> Uh, don't do that. It's like, that too bad, bad, we did. Whoopsie. We're not accountable. I already lost the package that I did and I don't work there anymore. Goodbye. Oh my God, I would cry. I would literally just start crying. Uh, uh, I wouldn't because I'm like a cool, strong will. Oh yeah, you're cool. Snowflake. I forgot, for epic sure. Jock. I I'm a strong will snowflake. I'm so, I certainly didn't cry and don't check. Don't check the footage of my tears. <laughs> don't check my Instagram. <laughs> Pretty good place lots of like little pieces of good news none of which i think would be particularly interesting but you know when you just have like a functional week it's like this worked Mm -hmm. every part of this worked as it needed to and yeah i also watched a lot of video game based documentaries in case you were wondering if i was a cool jock just a little bit of clarity for you just to to go along with my face and actions i would ask you about them but we have company and i'm not going to put nezrin through no please we'll 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 do that on a real episode of the show (laughs) on an episode Um, of the show where it's just the boys it's boy town just just the lads that's when we get we we get nice and misogynist on a friday yeah oh man we hate women Mm-hmm, no, I'm just sure. I can't even no, say I'm that. We hate ourselves. Hey, no, sh- sh- be quiet, Nezrin. We didn't stay good talk. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> I know it's such a the horrible bit. Is bit. No Why good are we for doing anyone. it? <laughs> Jarvis, how was your week? Let me ask a question. How Aww. was your week? Yeah, Jarvis, you big piece there of we shit. Go. <laughs> <laughs> my week is good. I, I relate to the the functional nature of the week. I got some good, you know, professional news this week that maybe I can talk about at some later date. And then I w- was pretty productive, which is exciting. I shot a couple of videos, which is rare. 
I also dusted off my second channel, and that's really that's cool. That's right. Oh, yes. I saw. Didn't you hit 100K? I did. Yes, I hit 100K legend. on my second channel. A lot of them aren't bots. So that's exciting because it's an account that on average, I post every six months. It's a nice and premium channel called Jarvis Johnson Gold, and it's free. Can you believe it? To, to watch. And I'm going to be posting there more often because I can do unscripted videos there and not feel guilty about it. And mm -hmm. unscripted videos are easier to make. <laughs> Turns out. Yeah, so that's been fun. And then there was a time earlier this week when my apartment was clean. Uh, it's no longer that way because I unfortunately have dishes strewn about, but mm -hmm. it's slowly getting cleaner, which is also kind of a litmus test for how I'm doing in life. It's like, yeah. is my apartment clean? Life really is the moments in between your apartment being kind of clean. Yeah. It's like, are your clothes on the floor? If so, you're probably going through it a right redneck. now. <laughs> you might be a redneck. You might be a redneck. Nezrin, well, how's Thanks your for asking, Nezrin. cleanliness to sort of mental health and wellness ratio? You always put oh, diligent. It's, it's chaotic. Really? Yeah. I feel like you present very well on Instagram. Thank you. Know, you. I really try. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. That picture in my room yesterday, it's never looked like that. <laughs> mm. There is a you uh, like Photoshopped 320 out. degree <laughs> yeah. sphere around what you can't currently see in the camera. Exactly. It's just filth. No, it's just been kind of hectic because I feel like I'm still like getting all my stuff. Like I'm having furniture delivered. Packages are kind of like, I never take out my recycling. So there's like a giant stack of like boxes everywhere. And oh, I've so had so many person? shoots and I've had mm. like clothes just all over my, yeah, it's gross. Dishes everywhere. I see some right now. I just, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. No one heard my joke where I called you a bad person for not recycling. So I just want to say that that was a joke and it was I do recycle. Be. When I take mm. my I'm, boxes out, I like take yeah. them to recycling. Jarvis, do uh, I strike no, you as a person I, who doesn't recycle? <laughs> No, not at all. I was, I was, I was just joshing. But I am learning that I was reading a think piece about how plastic, like manufacturers, have like lobbied and advertised to make everybody think that like recycling is a super good thing, and actually, uh, it's it's quite difficult to recycle a lot of plastics, and it ends up contributing to a lot of land waste. Yeah, I also and, recently uh, learned that half the stuff you recycle it actually gets to the recycling center and they're like, never mind. And then they throw it away. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, why yeah. did I literally sort all my bottles and cans and papers like for this? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the it's people sad. at the recycling center will put it into the next circle of recycling center. It's like hell. Yeah. And it goes a level <laughs> deeper. And yeah. for every level down it goes, they, they beat up one turtle. Oh no. Poor turtle. <laughs> they just beat up one endangered animal. Oh, so, I don't like no, that. You know, it's one, right? So it, it's hard to go wrong. <sighs> We're still doing our best. We're doing our best. I watched a dystopian documentary this week. Has anybody watched The Social Dilemma? I was literally going to no. watch it tonight because everyone's been talking about it. Yeah. Are you in Are you in the mood to be depressed? <laughs> I mean, it, always. Come on. Do you want to just kind of double yeah, down in case up. you already are? Yeah. I was like, I'm already in the mood. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the it's, premise? Uh, the premise is that we have created uh, social media companies that are like super governments that are more powerful and rich than ever before. What? And um, they are like Facebook and such, and they are responsible for a lot of bad in the world and I have next to no accountability for it. It's a lot of talk about the polarization of society and echo chambers and how it's a little bit like whoopsie doopsie. We just wanted to make a photo sharing website. How did we <laughs> erode democracy? Literally. <laughs> Why do we know your blood type? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting though. I, I think it's like, other than the fact that there are basically no people of color in the documentary, uh, which, is a, which is a problem, kind of speaks to a greater problem with the tech industry. It was a little bit of a flashback into my former life where I was like, oh, I've met that guy before. <laughs> I know that dude. And a little bit like, yep, that's that's how it goes. I'm naturally optimistic. So I was like, left it with, I like my optimism is still intact. But I was also like, I think the way that I can affect change, I'm better suited to do it now from my platform than I was when I was working inside of the tech industry. So I'm still glad I, I left. Interesting. That's I'm going to have to watch my, that. That's my hot take. I mean, it's good. It's just, it's also strange. Like they, they, it's a strangely shot documentary. They use a mix of like interviews with scripted scenes that illustrate various like uh, examples of how people have become addicted to technology. Is it like those like true crime documentaries where they have actors yeah. like come in and like yeah, it's the like crime. a dramatization. Okay, yeah. got, it, it like, got it. Like like CSI tier where it's like. 
he, he's gone into the mainframe and become <laughs> addicted to facing the book. Kind of. There's a, a few scenes from a family who's like kind of being strained by their relationship with social media. And then there's also, I think the cringiest stuff to me is that there's a, these cutaways to like the algorithms of like these three guys that are like, all right, what should we show Joe? It's like, if we show oh. him his ex, like maybe he'll come back to our website. <laughs> And like the Greek fates from Hercules. Yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> Will we allow him uh, to look at right wing propaganda? Exactly, yeah. It's like I don't know how good of a metaphor that is, but if it activates people to like sort of be on the side of change and regulation of like these big tech companies, then I guess that's good. It's an interesting documentary. I do recommend watching it. I don't think it's bad by any means. How do you engage with that since that's sort of your main platform, right? Like that the work that you do is very Instagram oh. central. Like. Yeah. I mean, I I like wish like social media like wasn't such a giant part of what I do. I wish I could just like take pictures and like <laughs> that was it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah Instagram but, uh, is like it's where the coins are. It's where everyone's eyes are yeah. all the time. And I Sick. Gotta collect. Co You're like Sonic. You gotta collect yeah. the coins. <laughs> as sick as I am of like the algorithm and just like what it favors and what it doesn't, you just have to like learn to play into it and stuff. And it's like yeah. I've also worked with some of these really big tech companies, and I love it. Uh, you know, it's been fun. It's been great jobs and stuff. I've met awesome people. I met Jarvis. So uh, oh, yeah, it's you know, I just play the game. I'm just a little, just a little pawn in the game. So. I just want to point out that I kind of triggered. I said that Sonic cares about coins. He doesn't. He cares about rings. But <laughs> it was really funny. Dude, I fucking love Sonic when he's jumping on like those Goombas heads and stuff. Like, Wait, whatever oh, yeah. happened to yeah. the Sonic live action movie that everyone was like so triggered by what he looked like that they changed it? Yeah. Did anyone ever they watch changed that it. movie? They turned it around into what people are now saying is the best video game adaption to a movie ever. Really? Which is, yeah, I haven't seen it yet though. It's not the tallest bar to <laughs> No, it's it. it's not a it's not a high bar, but the movie was critically like well received, which is like never happened before. It for, is like, uh, fine. It there are parts of it that yeah. slap like a runaway train, and that I can really get behind. But then there's other parts that are like there's a lot of it that's just a movie, right? Like it's yeah. James Marsden's in it, and it's like we got to go across the country, me and Sonic, to figure this whole thing out. And at oh, no, no point, does somebody just go like, "Hey, Sonic, you're like super fast, right? Like you could just run there with your legs that you have." And instead, it's like, "No, we'll drive there in a, in a guy's." car like a human man's car <laughs> jim carrey's great though glad to see that they he's don't still even around. fly i wonder if uh he employed his classic technique of abusing people on set and pretending that it was <laughs> for the sake of the character or whatever oh no is that a thing that jim carrey does <laughs> that's that documentary about him playing like in the andy kaufman movie man on the moon or whatever it's it's on netflix oh. and it's called like me jim and andy or something like that and it's just him like Getting into the mind of Andy Kaufman. Was Andy Kaufman a character or was he a man? And it's just him like yelling at people on set. Oh, no. <laughs> and then like people on Twitter just being like, oh, it's so insightful. How does he? How it's does he do it? His mind. Able to be mean to people. Your mind, Jim. Damn. Can we talk about, have you guys seen this Twitter thing where people are calling out platforms for their, and this has been happening for ages, how algorithms can kind of end up racist because there aren't black people working on a lot of these things. So like the through the testing, it like doesn't happen. So this goes way back to years and years ago when face tracking wouldn't work on black faces because like they weren't ever tested and they're too dark or whatever. These are all yeah. like a lot yeah. of quotes around, around this. <laughs> Someone called out recently, there's this viral tweet where, you know, everyone's on zoom now and someone's student couldn't change the background of his scene because when he changed the background, it removed his head. <laughs> what? And, it's, and it's, 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 yeah. And the reason it removed his head and instead thought like a globe behind him was his head <laughs> That's uh, is so because bad. he was an African dude. And it's just like, come on, guys, it's 2020. Also seems like something that would be, I mean, I know there's a lot of different lightning conditions and there's a lot of factors there that wouldn't always be testable, but it seems like get yeah. 10 black people. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> here's a thought. Look for some eyeballs. Uh, those mm. do look the same on most people. Just the thought. <laughs> Almost everyone. Almost everyone. Black people famously have dark black eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, like a doll. Like a doll. <laughs> Beady little eyes. No, <laughs> but, eyes. Um, and so then another thing that people started to point out, and I want to play with this 
is um so twitter i was gonna say i saw photo. that one today of barack yeah. obama and like mitch mcconnell like the yeah. top and the bottom thing and it came on mitch mcconnell's face like both times so <laughs> also never use the okay, phrase I mean, came I on mean, mitch like the, the thing like Wait landed no like, no no oh. i know exactly what you're saying i'm like this is not it's, about you it's about <laughs> why my brain went there yeah. Tyler, cut this out. Mm, um, it's, it's challenging for us because we have to continue being alive after you said that. Um, so, yes, Twitter reframes photos when you post them. So, like, you'll notice this because, like, it'll have a little preview of the photo and then it'll kind of move around. Like, the photo will, like, reposition itself. Yeah. And it's typically looking for a face because if it detects a face, then it's like, oh, let me center around the face, which is all well and good. But the weird thing is that it picks white faces over black faces like 100% of the time. Like people posted these like very long photos where at the top it was like a headshot of like Obama or or a stock photo model that was black and at the bottom a stock photo model that was white and then another photo that was the same with their positions switched and in both cases they just find the white guy and then center the white guy to the point it's like centering them in a way that it looks like the black person isn't even there it like frames it such that you wouldn't even tap into the photo yeah because you wouldn't expect there to be more of the photo. So I want to I want to play around with this. I want to photoshop myself white. <laughs> and then yeah, a, a portion <laughs> of your audience is going to love that. That's not what I was that. expecting you to say at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want to Photoshop myself white and then like have other like versions of me. I'm going to put on white face, everybody. Oh, I didn't know there was a history to it. No, no. Well, it's like a long and storied history of uh, minstrelsy where white people. Uh, no, wait, though, that doesn't. They were, that was. Well, no, because they were already people. suffering. Is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hmm. No, hmm. not a historian. Uh, yeah, no, not a. Sorry, I'll have to check the history books. <laughs> oh, white people were always good. Okay. Oh, Gucci. <laughs> History books didn't You're have like, anything bad right. to say about him. So. Wow, short book. Short book, yeah. Huh. And Christopher Columbus was a good guy. I, I see. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Weird, but very specific. But are you going to Photoshop yourself white and just go to town? Actually, I'm just going to post myself as a white guy and <laughs> move on. <laughs> I think you, my life will be a little bit easier. I feel like your people on your YouTube Instagram are already shocked enough to find out that you're black. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Actually, I was really just going to raise the brightness on my face, but everybody chill. <laughs> 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 you know, with like a mixed complexion or whatever, based on the white balance of a photo, I can look like anything. And so people just don't like someone in the chat earlier was saying that Jordan looked looked white or something. And I I'm do. like, don't do that. Don't say that. <laughs> but it's ever a, to any black it's person. Certainly not like your call. <laughs> I look yeah. brighter, right? Yeah. Weird yeah. weird lighting, but that's the lighting. Yeah. I have yeah. one pure white, no tungsten light in a yellow room. <laughs> so it is bouncing out my face to be that of a ghost. No, the lighting definitely does matter. I feel like I look very pale today, especially it's, with But this. it's also just because of like what happens in, I mean, so that's kind of the thing. Like if you don't have, you know, an equal representation of basically everyone from every background doing every job, you're going to get these weird biases in technology or what have you. And so even like getting washed out, even like, a, yeah, the camera stuff or like face tracking or detection and, and all that shit. It's like, how much of this is just a limitation of the technology versus like not- Not doing like, the work. Or, or not having the right people in the room early enough where that it's like after the fact, it's like you're you, you're- hiring a bunch of black people to like look at your cameras to test your face tracking. I feel like we've gotten too far in the process at that point. I would give literally anything to be in that meeting. <laughs> Fucking uh, a six-year-old white dude walks in, he's like, what up, my brother? <laughs> it's like waiting for the fist bump. So, uh, homies, we are going to need a little help figuring out, because uh, our phones, they've gone wiggity-wiggity-whack, right? <laughs> Just like trying to play with them. Yeah, I read this article oh recently too about this kid who, he was a black kid, but he started like photographing and documenting what different um, medical like illnesses and like stuff look like on black people. Because when you like normally Google that, you get like, if you're like, I have like a blister, it shows up on like white skin. And people are like, I don't know like what this illness is that I have. Like I can't even WebMD anything because I'm black. And yeah. I was like, wait, that's so interesting. And why have I like even never like noticed that? I don't yeah. know. Oh, there's so much like 
white as the default that yeah. is like, baked into society where it's like like why is white the default other than you know colonizers and stuff because it's like it's not like they outnumber the world population yeah you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. there's almost like a complacency in it right because if i i still probably would have to like if somebody's describing say like a character that i've never seen or is even has drawn something in black and white right it would still be i think an exceptional step in my brain to identify that as a non-white character just because I grew up almost exclusively around white people. Yeah. And I've internalized it. Like, I know that it's not the default, but if I weren't encountering how weird that was every day and I grew up around white people and I was white and it had never entered the sphere, I wouldn't think about it for a fucking second. I'd be like, yeah, of course, there's normal and then there's everything else <laughs> on top of that. Like, yeah, it would, it would infect your brain, man. I mean, that's why like a yeah. lot of people don't write non-white characters mm -hmm. because it genuinely just they finish the screenplay and they go i'm all done yeah and like wait what what it, can you describe these characters in greater detail well um we've got pale and sort of ivory they're <laughs> olive skin <laughs> all normal <laughs> yeah you're all defined by the undertones of their, <laughs> their white skin <laughs> is that something that you've had to interact with as far as your your gig goes i don't know do you get any conflict on instagram purely because anybody can comment oh well also just to add on to jordan's question there's the whole thing of like white photographers photographing black people and doing a really mm. really bad job oh yeah i mean that's like a whole that's a whole other thing okay wait answer jordan's thing first and then and then i'll, I'll bring that one back jordan wait what was your question again do I, like, you receive forgot. a decent chunk of problematic comments on your work or no. is it more a uh, no, almost no. none. I remember one of the most critical comments I got was that I actually shot too many girls with long hair. Some lady was very mad that I didn't shoot enough girls with short hair or like she, I think she was bald and she was like, you don't shoot any bald girls. And I was like, I don't know mm. any bald. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Sorry. I should be more diverse, <laughs> but I, I really try and have a ton of diversity in my work. I mean, I really started liking photography when I started shooting more like mixed girls and black girls and people that looked like me because I, I shot a lot of white people for a long time. It was very trendy to shoot like the yeah. blonde girl, like hair blowing in the wind. And like, I was yeah, working for yeah, all yeah. these like white rappers and stuff. And so that was just like my job. Mm. But yeah, I actually, I don't get very many hate comments because I think I do a pretty good job of being diverse. But in that, I also get a lot of comments and a lot of bookings because um, people are like, oh my God, you know how to shoot black people. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I sure do. Do you yeah, use what, like how a do you normal do it? <laughs> camera for this? Where do you get the special camera that does that? Do you use the like infrared black people lenses that they sell <laughs> on BET.com? <laughs> <laughs> on BET.com. No, but it's actually crazy because that's a comment I've gotten like multiple times. And I am always kind of shocked by that because I'm like, who are these people working with that like, you know, they're turning out orange or white or like ashy fucking brown. I have no idea what. Or just like so dark <laughs> that you can't see any of the complexion. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, maybe it's because I follow like a lot of black photographers who also, you know, do a great job of that. But apparently that's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge problem because there's like, was it Simone Biles or Serena Williams? That Simone was, like, Biles. Those pictures were not Simone good. Biles. Those pictures were not good. I mean, like no shade to the photographer who I, I'm sure is very talented. It was Annie like, Leibovitz. <laughs> Yeah, I just was looking at Black Twitter and Black Twitter was very upset. And I understand that some people are like, how is it different? It's all about like how light reflects on like skin and how- And like, even with editing and stuff, it's like how you bring up the colors. Editing. I just remember those photos, like Simone Biles looked like gray. And I was like, that's not a yeah. skin tone. Like that's, I don't know what was going on with that editing, but I was like, that's yeah. not it. Like they could have just edited it better, but yeah. yeah. For the people who truly can't like crack the idea of the why, you're probably under underestimating how much of being a good content producer especially photography is invisible like you would look at oh, it and yeah. go oh well i mean they just got a dslr quick pick great yeah look, that looks just like the, it would in real life i could do that you buy a dslr <laughs> you take a photo it's like overexposed due to the sun your subject yeah. is completely black and it's That's like, like <laughs> 
This isn't, what, like I, what, this isn't like, what I intended to do. Like grabbing a bunch of like pastels or like oil paints and throwing them at a canvas and then be like, and it's the picture that I wanted. Exactly. <laughs> There's like so many additional steps and you could mess them up really easily if you just don't know what you're doing. Someone said blame the editors, not the photographer. And I feel like that's wrong. I mean, usually because, the photographer is well, also the editor. Vote? So so one, usually it's the same person. If not, like the photographer is putting their name on it. So yeah. they're not hands off on the editing process if they're not doing the editing themselves, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's wrong. I, I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm going to. these I'm gonna, images now. I was not up to date on this. This is really interesting. I'm going to go ahead and say this person is not a professional photographer. So we're not going to. We can probably go uh, ahead and safely assume that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who knows? The show Insecure gets a lot of well deserved praise for how it captures black people on film. And like they have like lots of interviews and things about how they do it. And for anyone who's like curious about this, you could just like watch one of those videos, I'm sure on YouTube. Yeah, that uh, show is so good. I love Insecure. Insecure is great. Issa Rae, shout out to Issa Rae. Come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening. I wonder, first of all. I feel like we could get Issa Rae on the podcast. We, we might be able to pull some strings. I feel like you could. I feel like she's really cool. <laughs> we are I know. I feel two like, yeah, that, people away from Issa Rae. That is true through I Patreon think maybe stuff. even one person. Well, through Patreon too, but then I actually know somebody who may be able to connect us. Anyway, we like Issa Rae. Nezrin? We, we like Issa Rae. <laughs> yeah, Nezrin, I know someone who's maybe in the room. <laughs> I know somebody who knows her, but so I'm also yeah. two people away from Issa Rae. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll both go to our people and then we'll sort of surround Issa Rae with our, <laughs> our yeah. connections. Mm. Eventually she'll have to submit to being a friend. I want to jump back to social media because it's kind of where all of us work, <laughs> including right even this moment. And <laughs> so how do you, Nezrin, think about your Instagram and your, how do you think of social media as an extension of yourself, but also your job? I know it's a big question, but it's like, yeah, I was like we Whoa. kind of like live, live online. But like when I was in, l let's just back up and like, what was your relationship like with social media when you were in high school? Oh, well, I was and, and like Tumblr famous and I thought I was the you were what? shit. I was Tumblr famous. Oh, I had so many followers on Tumblr. I actually had like 80K, which was kind of a lot back wow. then. Wow. Yeah. What a fan fiction. Literally not fan fiction, but it was like my bad photography somehow was getting me like so much attention. It was aesthetic. Yeah. I was like a quality blogger, if you will. Um, I really missed Tumblr. Mm. It was fun. I felt like I, you know, I would just come home from school every day and like, go on Tumblr and like that was great. And I had Tumblr friends who I'm still like friends with today, but they were my first That's like awesome. internet friends and stuff. And um, yeah, I think, I think that like really solidified like my love of the internet and social media. Cause I was like, oh my God, I can like post stuff on here and people like it and people like me. So that was cool. And then Yahoo bought Tumblr and, you know, we all saw where that went. So I had to, had to make an Insta. Yeah, Literally Russia it. owns it now, I think. I think so. so it Tumblr went yeah. really downhill. It's super sad. It tumbled, it tumbled downhill. Yes, exactly. But yeah, I mean, I treat, obviously, as you can tell, uh, Twitter as my personal platform and Instagram as my <laughs> more professional platform. Nezrin's Twitter sometimes feels like... <laughs> so personal that I'm not sure that I'm allowed, supposed to be reading it, you know? <laughs> but it's so I funny because really, my, my mom will text me and she'll be like, oh, like, why did you post that on Twitter? And I'm like, mom, that's not for you. That's for 25,000 strangers. That's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. weird. <laughs> it's for these other weird strangers. Yeah. It's so real. It's so real. Like I also like admire it a lot because I have always been so self-conscious about how I present myself in every space in a way that I don't think is healthy. So whenever I see people who are like putting themselves out there in ways that I couldn't, I'm always like, that's amazing. How do you do that? So oh, thanks. I, I, I want to give you props on your Twitter. <laughs> uh, What's the catalyst for that? Is it literally just, hey, I'm doing this thing and I want to say these things? Or is yeah, it, I think in like high school and like college and stuff. Also, when I didn't have a lot of followers, I would just tweet like, hey, I'm doing this today. Or I like, I just hung out with my friends and it was so much fun. And like, I would just tweet whatever. And uh, haven't stopped. Just haven't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, I was like, 
Anything goes. And today, uh, it's the same. Anything still goes. <laughs> Nothing's changed at all. Nothing's changed at all. And neither yeah. have I. Well, Jay, how's your, what, do you feel like you're evolving in your relationship with social media? Or is it kind of now just, it's 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 pragmatic, right? You need to get it right or you, you're going to look like a right goober. Yeah, I mean, my relationship with social media, I feel like when I was in high school, Facebook was an extension of my social life. But I don't know if it was in a particularly healthy way. It was mm. mostly this weird practice that always happened. When I was in high school, people would go to parties and then take a fuck ton of photos and then upload them to Facebook so that I could feel bad about myself for not being invited to that party. Oh. Like, and I was like, why is everybody always partying and then uploading so many pictures on Facebook? I just get to go, oh, oh, those are all of my friends that are hanging out without me, great, fantastic. <laughs> and no one's thinking about it like that, obviously, because I'm the center of my universe. I just felt very excluded and uncool and very like trapped in my like little space because I didn't have like a lot of agency in high school just due to circumstance. So that was a bummer. But then my like Twitter and Instagram and stuff, I feel like on public platforms, because now I barely like, I don't use Facebook really, but my Twitter from like whatever, 2009 when I started it, I've always run my social media like I was a public figure, mm. which is not sort of me, like it's, it's less about me having delusions of grandeur and more being like sort of seeing cancel culture coming a yeah. mile away. Yeah, very like sure. censored and like edited and stuff. Yeah, it's like, I'm just like, if you like go back in time through my old tweets, all you'll see is a bunch of bad dad jokes, you know? Like <laughs> mm. I sometimes do that. Like I'm like, what did I used to tweet about? And it's like, I went to McDonald's today and this funny situation happened and I'm like, okay, man, cool. Like, <laughs> that's fine, I guess. Now let's talk about Israel. <laughs> my parents always oh, drilled it into me that they were like, you're never going to get a job if you like like say anything crazy on the internet and like me in That's my head stuff. i was like i don't want a job anyway so like i didn't really care but i know that was like, <laughs> that was like, mean, a like very you're never like gonna get a job thing. unrelated to social media like you're just not gonna be able to get a regular office gig because you have this yeah <laughs> this history i love that idea somebody going on and seeing like a weak take about the last season of game of thrones yeah. like, I, don't <laughs> I don't know about that one but yeah now i treat social media very much like a workplace so it's like a game mm. that i'm trying to win at <laughs> which is like but in that i am keep my distance from it there's nothing on social media that really makes me like feel bad about myself as a person but when my things don't perform well it's uh like i'm losing at the game i'm trying to win and so it still like hurts no i feel that Measure i feel like that. all the photos yeah. i take that uh -huh. i really like end up not doing that well on social media and i'm just like do people hate my art? Do they hate me? Should I just right, never yeah. post That's again? That's when you hit it with a quick repost and this deserved better and the rest of you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm cool. you, you post on the story. You post on the story. Uh, attention, followers! It looks like you made a mistake. I would like to direct. Your I'm like, hey guys, new post for the fourth time. Please go like it. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, Do I'm thinking about duty. just posting. If a if a joke does well on Twitter, I'm thinking about taking an older one that I think crushed and <laughs> didn't get the attention it deserves, and just posting it below. Saying, oh, oh, you below. See this shit? Yeah, I do repost stuff from years prior that never got any traction because I like scroll through my old tweets. I have a document of all my old tweets and I'm like, look at it sometimes for inspiration. Like what are some things that I used to be thinking about? And then I'm like, oh, this is still good. Let me just like reformat this in like 2020 Twitter language and then just like delete the old tweet and like repost it so that no one knows. You're like, yeah, this is a new thought. It's not recycled. <laughs> it's a new thought. It's like, weirdly, it's mm. about college, but I guess you, it was just <laughs> on the mind. <laughs> hey, anybody else notice that these newer seasons of The Simpsons aren't as good as the old ones? <laughs> I can't believe they're taking community off the air. Um, <laughs> I love that show. I'm Yahoo. so mad about it. <laughs> Oh, I, I just love got bought so, by Yahoo. I'm feeling so pretty optimistic. I'm so optimistic about Yahoo Screen, the future of video. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if you ever had any, you know, you talked about your your parents being like, you'll never get a job if you're posting on social media like this. But because photography, it's changed very much in like in the times we live in today, but old people still know what photography is. So like, have you ever encountered the like, what is it that you do exactly type questions from oh, people? Oh, all the time. Okay. All the time. I'm trying to think. I get that a lot from like my mom's friends because she'll, she'll like send out like our yearly Christmas letter. It's like, well, Amira, who's like my younger sister, she's like, she went to Northwestern. She graduated. She's doing so good. She's doing so many things. Nezrin, like, 
I don't really, she's like on tour, I guess. Like, I don't know. And then like, <laughs> like she's like a Twitch gamer or some shit. Yeah. So I'll yeah. like see my mom's friends in real life and they're like, so like, what do you do? Where are you living? And I would explain to them, yes, I have my own apartment. Yes. I'm actually doing mm-hmm. really good. Yes. This is a real job. I pay my taxes. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't get it. It's kind of crazy, especially the freelance thing, because I have to yeah. explain to them that like, I tour with musicians and I do events for YouTube and I do all these other things and I shoot ad campaigns for all these big companies. And then I like do whatever the fuck I want. And they like can't wrap their head around that. They really, really? can't yeah. do it. That seems so digestible. I, like, thank you. You know I'm how there's you images so. everywhere I still all don't the time. get what you do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I still don't understand what you do. You're on tour with the gamer. Is that what's happening? <laughs> You're yeah. on the internet? <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. We'll just okay, boil cool. it down to that. You're an engineer or something. Right. You're in IT. I, I don't know if we've talked about this much, but my understanding is that you were doing the touring with musicians thing and then you kind of shifted. Did you shift your focus more to portrait photography or more like brand stuff was that kind of following the work or was it more like I don't want to be on tour anymore no it was kind of more following the work I was honestly just getting more offers for stuff like that and you know would do it doing events for YouTube and stuff that was like once or twice a month I would be flying for that and so I couldn't really book tours as frequently because for that I have to book out like two or three months at a time just to focus on one project right. where usually all these other separate things are paying way more than like a tour is paying So I kind of like weighed my options. I mean, I still definitely love working with artists and someday whenever that resumes, that industry um, would love to do that again. We'll allow you to tour with us. Oh my God. Thank you. You'll allow me. Thank you so much. You're like, you can't talk, but you can. Yeah, yeah, you can't talk. (laughs) You can. <laughs> the, the budget is really, really tight, so it's mainly for exposure. But oh, we're so cool, excited to have you along cool. with us. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I exposure. Mean, you like... That's a photography joke, actually. Yeah, it's for exposure. Yeah. Oh, yikes. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yikes, anyway, I'll singular. see you guys later. <laughs> You're like, bye. That was the last one. We peaked. Right now, yeah, it's mainly like brand stuff, portrait stuff, um, couple like random behind the scenes things. I'm just taking whatever comes out. Dude, COVID's so weird for photography. Like. Yeah. Life is not normal, but I'm still working all the time. So I like can't figure that out. But yeah. COVID is so hard to take a photo of. It's so fast and small. It's it's so small. Yeah. Airborne too. How has it kind of changed the way that you work? Um, I mean, for like six months, I was not shooting at all. I was just doing like at home Instagram brand deal type shit just because I was like, I don't want to see people. I was seeing my mom. And so I like didn't want to see like other random people. And then after moving down here, I just... People are booking with me all the time, which has gotten really overwhelming because I'm not used to doing that anymore and like shooting that frequently. So yeah, just trying to be safe as possible, wearing a mask, getting tested every Monday. So is that true? That's, that's awesome. true yet that like you can work in the same capacity as long as you're doing Yeah, that. you it's totally can. Like- I mean, I was on a shoot a couple of weeks ago though. And like the stylist and his girlfriend just decided that they didn't need to wear masks. And I was like, you're not essential. So you can put that back on, sir. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Some people like don't get it and that's a little bit scary, but yeah, you can, you can work. You can make it work for sure. It would be silly of us not to say like, I'm sure that there's people in the chat and people listening to the podcast now that the number one question would be, oh, but how, how do I do that? Yeah. (laughs) I like, wait, I have a camera also, (laughs) but I'm not doing that. I can't figure out how to turn it on. I know. It's so crazy though, because I I feel like people are always like, how do I become a photographer? And I'm like, I, first of all, right now is not the time to start. I don't really think. (laughs) (laughs) But second of all, it is more than like owning a camera. Like, I mean, I started taking film photo classes in high school and I'm like totally self-taught since then. So it's definitely been a quite a long time coming. Yeah, I mean, like, but with anything, I feel like the answer is you kind of just have to start doing it and seeing where that takes you. And then when things aren't working, change it up and then yeah. kind of like keep on the keep on the scent. Because I can't tell anybody how to do YouTube for a job without saying make YouTube videos. Exactly. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You just have to like keep doing it. Well, and the thing about photography is I feel like a lot of people used to ask me like when I was doing music stuff, they were like, how do I like go on tour? And I'm like, it literally took me years to even book my first tour because you have to think about like, you have to have a great relationship with the artist. You have to live with this person on a bus. So they're not just going to hire some random person. It doesn't matter how good your photos are. You have to like get along with them. And it's all about like building connections, meeting people. And also like, I don't know, music photography is not for everybody. I'm like, there are so many different avenues you can take with photography. And I always just tell people like, 
find what you actually like shooting and what works for you. Yeah. Because music photography like looks glamorous, but it like doesn't pay shit. And it's honestly really stressful. And like, you may not like it. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I guess one nice thing about what you do is you can kind of like pivot into different spaces based on what is and isn't working for you. Totally. Style, which is, which is cool. But it also speaks to like, you can have a dream of touring with an artist and then do it and then go, oh, maybe this isn't like what I want to be doing a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. I feel like I've done a million different photography things and I've, I've honestly enjoyed just about all of them. And so I just kind of like vibe with it. See, see where it goes, seeing where it takes me. I mean, that's me. great. That means yeah. you're, you're in the right career, which is awesome. I'm having fun. Are you getting that yeah, hit that's what right matters. now, now that you're back at work of, oh, I needed this bar filled up. I needed this type of artistic validation to be my full yes. original self. No, honestly, for like the six months that I was not shooting, I was like so depressed. I was just in this little depression hole every single day. And I was like, I have no purpose. <laughs> like, I? I didn't like it. Yeah. I just played I Animal like Crossing and like cried. Yeah. I want to change. Um, be somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any fun tour stories? I don't want to put you on blast for like who you've toured with, but if you want to share. I mean, I have plenty. I'm just trying to think of any that would be appropriate to share on a blog. Oh, stream. okay. <laughs> All right. T, T, T. Are you comfortable sharing like what artists you've toured with? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, so I used to work in like more rap and hip hop stuff. So g Easy, Black Bear, Hoodie Allen, you know, all the all the white rappers. And then I kind of decided. <laughs> you were on their, like, number one photographer of white rappers. Yeah. And that was all three white rappers. <laughs> that was all of them. <laughs> that was, like, the start of my brand was, like, I was working for this one white rapper who introduced me to all the other white rappers. And... They were just like my squad. And I was like, wait. Ironically, they all know each other. Yes. Unlike <laughs> black people. <laughs> of course. Yeah, wait. How do you shoot white people? I, I you know. It's crazy. You have what to learn. It's a learned skill. So. <laughs> you got Leah. I wish I had the hair to put My on. little Debbie Ryan, like, hair tuck. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So, I started doing that. And then I was like, you know what? White men already, like, get everything else. I'm going to, like, I've decided to, like, help, like, women build their careers. So I kind of pivoted and started working with more female artists, which is super fun. And I think that's where I, like, really love having my career at, just helping women build, like, cool visuals and stuff for their careers. The only thing in that is a lot of them are much smaller, like, pop artists mm. and don't have a huge budget or aren't touring all the time. So I kind of, like, wasn't working quite as much. And that's when I started, like doing some other stuff with photography and like branching out in my free time. So that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Is there a part of your discipline that you wish you could do more? It doesn't even have to be in your job. It could quite oh, yeah. be, man, I wish I got to do, I wish I got to travel and take photos of this location. Or yeah, like I travel sometimes for work, like, you know, to really cool places. Like I went to like Laos um, to shoot for like an elephant sanctuary which was really cool oh, i was like i got hired by an elephant yeah just, just like just one really rich elephant flew me out yeah. uh, <laughs> he's trying to build his social media cache and he needed a new aesthetic yeah always always in the room and no one will talk about it but i always feel like all my work is in the u.s and i really just wish someone else would fucking hire me i'm like i want to go somewhere like <laughs> right right oh man so um i what i'm thinking so is we can dumb. <laughs> Oh, my <laughs> elephant like in the really room. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man. Oh, I have a question for you. How do you how do you manage it all? <laughs> Freelance is like so I That's a I, good question. Like, I know from my experience that there's a lot of emails, there's a lot of projects to coordinate. It can be very overwhelming. Like externally you just look like a superhuman who's like able to do it all, but we all know that it's not never that it's never that simple. So like, how do you manage all of your work? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, um, it's hard. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, on the, the, floor that's right the thing. Now. Yeah. I <laughs> honestly like would love a manager so badly, but I haven't really found mm. anyone who does like the social media and like brand deal content creator aspect of it, as well as also the photography stuff. So yeah. yeah, I just am left to my own devices. Um, I mean, Monday through Friday, I'm at my computer doing emails as much as I can, unless I have shoots and then I have to go out and do that. Saturdays and Sundays, I just sit on the couch and stare at the ceiling and like 
photosynthesize and try and recoup. And that's about it. That's that's my week. So when do you have time to like edit photos? Because I know that could be like a very time consuming process. Yeah, I'm about to edit tonight because I okay. haven't done any this week, but usually like in the evenings. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's a grind. It's Don't a grind. Don't have it's any a time to yourself job. or recover from your week. <laughs> yeah. Problem solved. I would say that like people, and you guys can let me know if this is off base, but for as much as it's glorified often, a lot of freelance work and a lot of the work that we do, we are very grateful, very happy to be doing it. It's, it's fun and it's got a lot of benefits, but oftentimes we are blurring the lines with work-life balance and yeah. we are having to put a lot into our work because we don't have the protections of like a corporate structure to guarantee that the jobs will be there tomorrow. So there's always this like mm. tug of, you know, I want to make sure I'm taking care of myself, but I also want to make sure that, you know, I'm going to be able to pay my bills and stuff. You know, Well, so yeah, like, like dealing with no, multiple no. projects at once with multiple deadlines and all these different deliverables and like shit you have to get done. Oh I'm, it's it's a lot, honestly. Like I I love it. I love being able to like work from home and like be my own boss and do all that shit. But I'm like, there is no one motivating me. There's nobody telling me I need to get this done. Just myself, like having to yell at myself, being like, you need to do this. Like, and I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know I'm the worst boss and worst employee. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, part of having a manager, at least a social network in an inside of a working environment, you need people to remind you who you are independent of what you're yeah. doing. Whereas if yeah. you take an evening to edit photos and then you go to sleep while you're sleeping, you're having dreams about like, <laughs> about Lightroom. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Expo- oh, that, yeah, that is who I am. The end. Oh, That's, God, that the, is all the of import me. dialogue in Lightroom is just like <laughs> popping up all of your memories from the day. It's very easy to lose track of yourself purely because you're, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know that we all like to, we as a people like to, black people, we as a, as a, as a <laughs> civilization you people. like to espouse the idea that, hey, you I don't know, think you can say that as a white man, Jordan. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's true. Hang on, let me get the light a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to espouse the idea of, hey, self-care and, you know, you are you, independent of what you do and your behavior. And at a certain point, <laughs> the things you're doing all the time, It's kind of who you are. I remember at various points in my life, people would talk about how they like, don't want to ever have a boss or anything like Mm. that. Like, it's like, I don't want to work a nine to five. I actually quite liked working a nine to five. I liked having a boss. I had like a very good and stable career. And to do what I want to do, I have to do it myself. And it's kind of a means to an end for me, but it's not for everybody necessarily you know so yeah shout out to all the bosses out there we love you we know you're hanging out in the chat uh <laughs> if you want to po- post a mope score what it's like being a manager right now out of 100 percent. big ups to the bosses we we need to give more love to the people in powerful positions with money <laughs> yeah let us know like what your q4 plans are uh <laughs> if your kpis yeah, are good. working out how things are going according <laughs> to plan or not we end every episode of sad boys with a particular phrase we We love love you you. and we're sorry yeah was that good did did i do it did i do good that was a whole thing gucci girl gucci girl how you doing how you moving girl moving girl how's your day looking that future girl future girl yeah we on now take my money go away oh you want it get too rich for me